Hello and welcome, it's Bulldog Games here. We're going to be carrying on with our multiplayer game that we're building from scratch all the way up to Steam and we're going to release it for free and uh, yeah, let's all have fun on it. Right, um, so it's been a couple of days since I last posted a video. Um, had a bit of a an headache with the next step. Now the next step is probably going to be connected into two bits. Um, what it is is to respawn. Um, and then getting everything to restart once you respawn, e.g. the lives, e.g. the points and the health. The health will probably be done in the next episode. But for this episode, we're probably going to get the respawn done and it respawning lives and things like that. So in the last episode, um, we could run around. We can munch these little green men with our dinosaur um, if we got too close to this man. He will pop us. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the score counter. And as you can tell, this is where our score shows at the top. Now, we just want to add a, sim a simple health bar, so it's pretty easy. So if you just click onto common and grab progress bar and pop the progress bar down there. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Rename this progress bar to health bar everyone should know this this is pretty pretty simple um, but obviously if you're new you're not gonna know so I'm just gonna quickly run through it so obviously when we add a percentage to this this is gonna go up and down so what we're gonna do we're gonna create a binding for this okay and this is what it's gonna open up as now what we have to do because this converts this from a float and on our third person character once it loads up our health and max health are floats. Now floats only work different decibels, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. They can work between 10, 12, you know, and so forth, but it's normally 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and the biggest number being 1. So this is what we're going to do here. We're going to literally go onto our health stat, we're going to click on here, we're going to open up the variables, default value, and then change this to 1. Same with the max health as well, we're going to change this to 1 also. That was the error on my part. One more thing that we need to do is open up the enemy AI character and do exactly the same for the base damage. Instead of 20, we're going to do 0 0.2. Okay, just so it all works fine. Go back to your score count. Now, what we need to do, we need to grab our third person character. If you do not have this here, if you go up to your event graft, you can cast to it. So you can literally get your player pawn, cast to your third person character, and then set. Okay, and then that will let you use this node here, this variable here. Then literally want to come out of here, get health, and then from health, straight into the zone value. So now when I press play, as you can see, I've got a blue health bar. I go near this geezer, it knocks off some health, until all the way down, and I'm dead. Okay, if you want to change the color of that health bar, go on to design, click on the health bar, scroll down, fill color and opacity under appearance and scroll it to red pink blue whatever color you want okay we're going to go with red because obviously red is health so we're going to keep that the same all right bear with me on the next step it is a bit tricky uh, i will try and explain it as much as possible um just try and keep with me i know i speak a little bit too fast but i'm trying to get as much as i can in this episode as physically possible as this is a big step now what we want to do is when we press play um, and you're eating these men. You want three lives. So if we eat this man, as you can see, you've got score one. This man's going to run up and kill us if they touch us. Boom, we explode. We want to lose a life. Okay? We want to lose a life and we want to edit our score. Now, in our score counter, if we click on the text box, oh, no, sorry, if we go to the graft and get our score counter in our function here. We're drawing this from the third person character. But what the issue is, is that when we die, we need to respawn a new third person character. Which means that all the values that the old third person character had, it will hold. Yeah? It's not going to take the new third person character. So what we need it to do, we need it to we need it to hold the amount of health health so lives and we need to need it to hold the score. And we need it to hold the health. Now the health is a little bit more difficult. So we'll be doing that in the next episode. But we can definitely do score and we can definitely do lives. Now 
on our third person character we have our score but we do not have our lives so we're going to implement the, the lives now so if you go back to your third person map right click go to blueprint class and and create your own player controller and i'm going to call this player controller oh all right three there you go main okay that's going to open up a brand new player controller we then want to go over to the world settings go under game mode selected game mode and then change this to player controller main the one you've just created click save open this up now this needs to go to your event graft and this needs a couple of variables so the first variable it needs is score okay because when we die when the player dies score is going to be an integer and lives is going to be an integer okay so when the player dies the controller stays the same it holds all the information for that specific player not the third person character so if it was a single player game yeah you could literally have the third person player the third person character holding all that information but because we're we're dying respawning and starting it and starting again pretty much we need to save all these variables and these the scores and the lives in this particular controller so this is this is the aim of what we need to do so we can get rid of that for the moment compile and this is all we're going to do here we're going to go back to our third person character and we're going to find some space okay we're going to scroll up to here and we're going to cr we're going to create hang on a minute let me find it this one that's it all right, and what we're going to do we're going to create another function okay and we're going to call this player died nope so add a new custom event and call this player die. and we're going to want to click to the replicator and get it to one on server okay because service you know serves the bus the next thing we want to do is get player controller pull off here we want to cast to player controller main the one we just created okay compile save that then from the, the player controller main yeah we want to get lives which is the variable we just created okay this will make sense soon we then want to pull off here and press the minimize the, the subtract button okay and we're going to want to subtract one live oh whoa hello thank you we're going to want to subtract one live from this pull out a controller again and set the lives okay and before I forget we need to set some values so I need to start with it. so theoretically what we're doing when this function is called we want to cast to the our main controller we want to get the lives minus the lives and then set the lives so if the lives free and we die we want to take away one from them lives and then set the lives again okay compile save go back to your controller main click on your lives and set it to three because that's how many lives i'm going to have you could have it as 10 12 15 one whatever one you want okay if you're going to have one life it's, there's no point in doing this there's no point in doing this step you know this respawn step but if you're going to have more than one life then it's, it's worth doing okay right, let me just quickly check to make sure i am yeah, I am recording the audio this time. I'm ever so sorry about that. <laughs> okay, um, it's just just what happens. Right, so we're going to go back to our third person character. We're going to go back to our third person character. And what we're going to do, let me just quickly get it up. As down here, so we've got set dead, we can delete that. Okay, we don't need that. Yeah, you can go back to the event, any damage, and you can delete it dead and the branch okay you do not need that and we're going to connect the health back up okay so the next thing we want to do once the player has died we want to call it so for example what right, event any damage the health we're going to take away the damage from the health we're going to clamp it so obviously it can't go below zero we're going to then set the health if it's equal or equal to zero then we want to do something so from the true function we want to quickly get that 
that function we just made, the custom event player. Right. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Move this out of the way. You can delete this actor and then let me explode for now. We do not need it. That's extras. That's just me being funny. Right. So on the player died, you've got player controller, cast to controller main. We're getting the lives. Uh, if we've died, we want to take one away from the lives and then set the lives. So once that's done, we then want to enter Ragdoll. Okay, so you made Ragdoll in the last episode, I believe, or the, or the episode before. So we want to add it up here. Okay, get rid of these. We don't need these. These are for widgets, which we ain't doing at the moment. So the Ragdoll server. Okay, so because we're going to be building it as a multiplayer game, there could be more than people, we need to make sure that the server has authority over this. Okay, so switch has authority. Okay, the remote is the client, the authority is, is the server. So what we're going to do from here, we're going to set a timer just for now. Okay, because obviously we're going to have a widget, but just for now we're going to set a timer by function. Okay. And we're going to set that timer to just probably say five seconds, yeah. And then we're going to the return value, right click, promote this to variable. This is to be used later, and we're just going to call it event timer, okay? No, sorry, respawn timer. We spawn timer. So we've got that there. So now what we need to do is pull off this event and create a custom event. So anytime this this when this timer when this timer runs out it's going to run this event and this event is going to be called respawn character okay character I've got a lot of my brain then. as you can tell it's half 12 at night so respawn character okay we need this respawn character to run on the client yeah okay so what we need to do we need to press alt because at the minute, if you click on this, you can't change the preferences. But if you can hold Alt, click the little red the squiggly line, then you can change it. So we need it to run on owning client, okay? Which means it will only run on this particular third person. So the, the, the third person and the controller that's connected to this third person. So now we've got this running on owning character, connect it back up to the event. The next thing we want to do is now again... When we want to cast to the player controller main, okay? Because obviously we want in a different thing. Now you could probably just pull in the uh, yeah. We need we need no. Sorry, we haven't got it. So to player controller main, we now need to cast this again. So we need to get player controller cast to player controller main. Now with the classes they can be heavy on a game but the problem is it doesn't really it doesn't really matter because this game isn't very big. And then once we've done that we are going to call a function but we need to build the function first in the player controller main okay. So go back to your player controller main which should be completely empty prior a couple of prior a couple of I mean it's that for the controller main yes okay Right, so if you go back to your third person map and open up your third person game mode. Now this is where all this information runs, okay? So we want to create custom event. This is in third person game mode or whatever game mode you're using. And we're going to call it respawn requested, okay? And this respawn requested needs to run on server. So we need to click non-replicate, run on server, compile, save. Now this is going to need a couple of inputs and the first input that it's going to need is player controller. Okay? And it needs to be the player controller you've just made the object reference. Does that sometimes? It's my brain in. There we go. We're going to need to create one more and this is going to be the spawn transform. Okay, so this is where we want this new player to transform, and that's going to be a transform, and we're going to compile and save that. So I have this spawn request. We're going to want to pull off and check if it's valid. Okay, so is valid. Oh, 
hello with a question mark there we go all right and we want to make sure that this controller is valid still the player is still in the game yeah and then we want to out of his valid we want to switch authority okay so we just want to check if it has authority or not okay and then we want to uh, if we, we do have authority we then want to spawn actor from class okay so the, the, the character that we're going to spawn is a third person character okay the spawn transform we're going to connect up to the spawn transform Let's put a little read that note there we're going to compile that and save okay and then what we're going to do out of here we're going to possess this right so we're going to possess this pawn oh don't do that my bad we need to pull it from the player controller and type in possess okay it's just a couple of renodes just make it look a little bit neater and pop that up but before we do that we want to get the delay we want to get a delay probably 0.2 seconds just so it stops any any sort of lag in it's got time to load it all up and the in pawn is going to be the spawn actor okay we're going to possess that and we're also going to add something on the end of this but that's not until we've done it in the controller so we're going to control save this this is what this this little uh, event looks like if you want to copy that anyway right and double check and things like that make sure this is run on server make sure you click the right class so now if we go to player controller main okay and we're gonna we're gonna create a custom event in here and we're gonna call this respawn pawn okay and this respawn pawn needs to run on server because it's obviously client base uh, server base so we need to run this so we need to get this game mode so what we're going to type in is game mode which get game mode and then we're going to cast to bp well it's third person so just type in third person game mode okay unless you're called saying kills well, you've got to cast to your specific game mode okay where you've just made this because we're going to put we're going to we're going to call this now okay so player controller main we're going to pull off here and we're going to get re spawn request okay and the player controller we're going to have a self and the transform you guessed we're going to add an input here and we're going to call it spawn transform Now, yes, if you're wondering, I do have the the blueprint next to me from my other save, but particularly just for reference, because uh, obviously, like I've done it, it sort of works and it's all it all comes together. I'm literally gonna, um, yeah, it all works. I'm just using it as reference. Okay, so now this works. We now need to add this into the third person character, but I'm just gonna quickly make one more custom event okay and what this custom event is going to do it's going to clear it's going to clear the score okay so every time we respawn it's going to clear the score so we're going to grab the score variable we get we're not gonna this is not going to be variable or anything like this it's just literally going to be for you we're going to take away and i entered 150 into this all right the reason for this is we're going to take away what the score has to restart again yeah so if you had 25 you, you had 25 men you died it's going to take away 150 but it's going to be clamped so it'll take away 25 and you start again okay so we're going to pull off here and get clamped and the minimum is going to be zero obviously because we don't want to go any lower and the maximum is going to be a thousand because i don't think you're going to be able to catch a thousand men within a time limit and then we're literally going to grab this we're going to set this to this okay so that's what we're going to do we're going to compile that we're going to save we're going to go back to the third person game and we're going to pull off this again and we're going to get it we're going to call yeah you guessed it clear score okay 
So once we've possessed a new character, should be done before, but it doesn't matter, it still works. Um, when we possess a new actor, which is the third person character, after we've died, it's going to clear the score. Okay, so this this is the game mode, and oh, this is the game mode, how it looks. Let me just zoom in a little bit more and get, make that a bit smaller so you can help. You can help yourself, blah, 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 blah. This is the main controller. This is what this looks like. Okay, and then now what we need to do is go back to the uh, third person character. Okay, and how this is going to work on the third person character is we're going to call that respawn pawn. So if you remember from this respawn character to this cast two player control main, we're now going to respawn. We're going to now respawn the pawn. So what we're going to want to do is out of the controller main, respawn pawn. Okay. And then from here, from this player controller, we need to now unprocess. Okay. So we're going to unprocess that. Let's just drag that up just to make it look a little bit neat. It drives me mad when there's fucking loads of wires running around. There you go. Um, and the spawn transform we're actually going to get from the third person, from the, the event begin play. Now, just a quick tip you probably haven't seen this. But what I like to do is I like to grab all my castings, anything I need to cast to, and create a function for this and call it casting. And then on the event, I could just literally just call casting while I have cast after cast after cast on the, on, on the event we can play. Okay, so what we need to grab from there, from the third person character, is the transform. <coughs> is the actor transform. So we need to get actor transform okay and then we need to promote this to a variable yeah and call this spawn transform okay and then set this and what this is going to do this is going to get the transform of this actor every time it gets spawned so yeah you bring it back down to here and then this spawn transform is going to be this variable you made okay and then put it down here we're going to control, we're going to save, and we're going to press play. Now, at the minute, I don't think the st all the scores are still going to work, but we want to die. So, let's die. We're going to die. Five minutes, uh, five seconds, we should respawn. There we go. Now we're respawned. We're totally in control of this one. But as you can tell, our score count is still one. And if we eat them, we're not adding scores. So that is our literally our next step. If we oh, that again, if we die again. Oh, God. Five seconds. We're going to respawn. Two for some reason. Okay, we're going to respawn two. Is that, is that how you're going to want to be? So, yeah. So that is... Um, how all this this stuff works okay so we're going to want to respawn the character and then we jump into the controller which holds all our information and then we jump into the game mode which holds all the game information so on the next thing that we need to do i believe is a score count okay so let me just quickly get this up because obviously i've done it all right so go back to the score count go to the design and let's create another text box okay let's grab the text box and bring the text box over here and we're going to call this text box lives what's going on there you go lives i'm out okay we're going to tick it to variable and this is going to be our lives map you guessed it we go around to content text and we want to bind this nah what we want to do is we need to get a reference yeah to the player controller main and how we did that was with exactly the same way that I showed that that I went in the first thing so we went to the event and as you can tell this is our cast to our third person player guitar. so what we want to do is get controller get player controller cast to player controller main 
and then promote that to available. So now we've got our reference to that. And then off then we compile, save. I want to highlight all this, right click, collapse the function, and call this function casting. Okay, so that has all the casting in it, it just keeps it nice and sweet, nice and simple, nice and clean. Okay, so now we can go to get lives amount. We can go to our player controller main, get. We can pull off here and we can get lives. Okay, get lives. It's a simple and pretty much exactly the same as the health one, but here we have a format text. Uh, here we have a, a text value. We want to format that text. Okay, so it will say lives, then these curly brackets, and then within them curly brackets, type lives. Okay, make sure you put a space between the lives and the curly brackets so it gives you a space. And what these curly brackets do. It's going to open up another box, which we can literally connect that to that node. Okay, so now when we press play, it should say three lives at the top. Yeah. So now we have three lives. If we die, we have two, we have one, and so forth. Okay. So for some reason we have one life. That should have said two lives. Let's just die. Zero lives. And it shouldn't let us respawn, but obviously we haven't set that. And it should this should go into minus one if we die, because obviously there's no clamp. There you go, nine minus one. So there's a tiny little bit of a bug there. Every time it touches, just look, we're minus now. It should it, it should leave us alone. It shouldn't keep touching us and making us die. But we can we can resolve that by going into the third person character and where we get the event any damage and we get player has died we want to grab the mesh here pull off <coughs> and destroy component oh. destroy component okay so and again pull off here delay and destroy component after two seconds okay because we're going to respawn after we're going to respawn after five and we're going to die after two. So kill me. Thank you. So yeah, it's definitely an issue. Um, I think that's just literally down to how we died. So like if he touches us while we die, um, it's just going to keep taking lives away. We're respawning very quick. Okay, so is it... Whoa! Yeah, so as you can tell, it's respawning every time we spawn a life. So the character must be right. That effect. Fuck off. Straight up. Fuck off. Right. So let me just quickly go through this. What we've done. So score, lives, health. Okay. So if we go to score account and we go to here and we go to our score count that's our lives that's our lives our score count there you go and we go to our score count right this is okay but we're not on the third person character anymore i don't think no we're not we need to be on the controller main and we're going to get the score get scores and we're going to plug this into it okay control save and what I just a habit of doing is create a variable called score make sure it is a integer yes thank you we're doing a score we are have I not fucked anything up we know right okay score we're gonna drag this in and we're going to add these motherfuckers together okay so the reason for this is that this this one is zero and this one is the actual score um, and we can refer back to it in a later video it's just we just keep literally just doing it now Joe we can add to it later um, this for like um, when you want to when you want to like add double points or like so when you eat someone you get free you pick up free or something like that. so we're just gonna literally add that in the next thing we need to do is go up to the third person character 
and we need to do something on when they die so when we destroy when we destroy the actor on server we're now not getting the kill count from here we're not getting the score count from the third person character we're getting it from the controller so I want to get controller of this specific player so get controller of this pawn you guessed it cast to player controller main from here we're going to get the score no not, we're not going to clear score we're going to get the score mate going to get the score okay so we're going to get the score and we're going to plus okay so the reason why I'm doing the plus and not the plus plus um, increment because the plus can be anything so from here we can the plus so from here for example if we destroy a specific actor and we copy and paste it this could be another variable to say add 20 to it okay so that's why I like to do that not into 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 car what the fuck it's called from here we're gonna set the score and then we're gonna add it to the execution pin boom okay so that's that one done let's let me just check to make sure I haven't missed anything I've got to destroy a component we've got the player died yep we've got that yep the score count so the casting is all done the event yep we're literally running all the casting on the event the lives yep the health bar yes so if we press go back to the third person menu oh wait did I compile that yeah and these green men I want to add a couple more so if you actually click on them and hold alt you can actually duplicate them without pressing control D you just hold you hold alt and it will so now when I press play I want to munch all these okay so no 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 well I've got three yeah now I want this geezer to kill me does need to uh, be updated a little bit more right so he killed me I've got two lives left when I respawn my score count is zero and I've got two lives left so now I can come no 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 right, don't stop people no 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 it's such a stupid game but it worked and I died um why am I still moving over there mate so look that's a little bug so we're gonna have to figure out that bug in the next video but yeah you've got a basic respawn system kill me kill me no. and it respawns your scores like I said the health at the minute if you, if you, that one worked if you check the health sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't oh we're spawning another one. Oh, we're spawning another one. Oh, yeah there is definitely a uh, a little glitch there oh we've got three of them oh we've got four of them now oh oh god Oh, I know. Right, so on the third person character. Go back to here. We do need that. He's dead. Okay, so get. He's dead. Click not. Boolean. Um, and then branch that. Okay. We need that. We need this in this situation. For now. And then add to true. So if he's dead, then he's dead. Okay, in the player died we also need to add it up here which I believe I'll put it into this one did I put that in there I right, know I didn't I didn't put it on the player died I'll put it here um, at the end of the destroy component um, <coughs> we just wanna so if the player is not dead then that's true click there so from here we need to set the player is dead to true and then go again so control C this once we've done all that and then we want to set it back to not dead so that should stop it you can add 
that should stop it taking lives away because we're already dead so there you go we're dead it should spawn us in another spot now we've got two lives we're dead again even though I walked over us so it didn't get rid of a live it did so what that's saying to me is that the 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 enemy AI needs to leave us alone once we die okay so yes okay we're deleting the we're deleting the mesh but we're not deleting the capsule component so we need to go back to third person character we're destroying that component and we also want to destroy the capsule component as well okay so we want to destroy both we want to destroy the capsule component and we want to destroy the mesh so if we can grab this press ctrl c ctrl v grab all this drag this forward and get rid of this one thank you and we can slot that one in there so as soon as we die we want to get rid of the capsule component which means that if they touch us anymore they kill us um, and then after five seconds four seconds after four seconds we die okay so now if we die it gets rid straight rid of our capsule component and whether they walk over us they're going to completely ignore us and walk off okay it's going to respawn us we're going to munch the living shit out of these little green men we've got two it's going to kill us we've now got one live as soon as we respawn the score count is going to go back to zero and we've got to start again and munch as many as these as possible and then once we hit come on kill me oh, yeah, just walk away I've got to sort out that AI now <coughs> if we're less than one so this is where um, another branch comes in so one player dies so uh, we're getting the lives and then obviously we're gonna check here so what are we on actually we're on 37 minutes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that there and I'm gonna sort that out in the next episode as well as the health I'm gonna sort out so when we have no more lives left it takes us back to a screen and when we do die it takes us to another screen where we can respawn quicker there's not gonna be a timer you have to press the respawn button to respawn okay so on that bombshell thank you so much for this uh, for taking your time to watch this video this is Bulldog Games make sure you like and subscribe uh, there will be another video out in the next couple of days um, and yeah this game's coming along really well if you do have any questions please leave it in the comments and on that bombshell have a good night bye bye